inductees and uh, they're going to be coming out of that room pretty soon you can start to walk over here this is the class here they come the, uh, uh, you know, the inductees are actually walking out of a special room in the back as you hear the applause taking place you'll see mike DeShane come into picture Joey Debris, Sal Balabacqua, I hope I pronounced your name right, Sal. And last but not least, Tommy Seminero. Tommy and Seminero Jr., Sal Bev. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, thank you. Please be seated. To give you a brief history of what's going on here in the past seven years, uh, we moved we moved this uh, Hall of Fame. It used to be in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Some of you probably remember that. Some of you were actually invent, inducted here in that room. Uh, Bobby Hunt for one of them. Say hello to everyone, Bobby. Bobby's one of the finest players ever to come out of New England. And I try to look around the room and recognize people that are in the Hall of Fame. Uh, looking behind me, I'm in the Hall of Fame too. I'm not only a member, you know, it's like the hair club for men, I'm the president too. But anyway, uh, that was supposed to be fun. <laughs> anyway, uh, here we are once again at Snooker's. And uh, seven years ago, Steve was about to open this room and he asked me if we could move the Hall of Fame or be another part of the Hall of Fame that was in New Bedford, Massachusetts. And we approached the owner of New Bedford, and he didn't seem too concerned about what we were doing here. So seven years ago, this this room was virtually empty, folks. It was it was a dungeon. I I, I said this guy's got to be crazy to be thinking about doing something like this. I didn't have his insight. Thank God he has his own insight because he's made this the most beautiful room in America, I believe. And the people that are in here and represented here are the beautiful pool players and people that done a lot, have done a lot, for the game of pool in New England. Not everyone on this wall is a superstar. They've contributed in many ways to the game. And we, we recognize that, and we think that's just as important as the people that play the game. So getting back, when Steve asked, I said, sure, let's try it. And, and we started, Ray and I started looking at a few things, and unfortunately, Ray passed away within weeks of what we were starting here. And I kind of inherited what we're doing, and I've tried to keep the tradition going on for seven years, and I, I like to think I'm doing a good job. And I hope you people appreciate what we're doing here. Steve, Regina, and, and myself, we're the committee that does all the work. We're the ones that either take the blame or get the credit. And that gentleman right there is Steve Goulding. Steve, raise your hand. He, he and his wife own this fine establishment. Tom McGonagall go recognizing Mr. Steve, Steve Goulding. The next two days will be a tournament here, the Ray to Sell Memorial to honor Ray. Ray is also the person that started all the, everything you see up on the wall, especially the early stuff, Ray did all that work. And, and, it's a pleasure and an honor to be part of what he started. Joe Tucker, another Hall of Fame member over there. <laughs> this, this is an American rotation. So let's get on with the ceremony. I hope you enjoy yourself tonight. This, to me, this is the best night in pool. It's the best day in pool because everyone up here is smiling. Nobody's missed a shot. Nobody's aggravated. No, nobody hates the other guy behind the bunch, the person shooting at the table. We don't hate each other, we just respect each other's ability. So I'd like to call, first of all, um, Mr. I'm going to read Tommy. Tommy, I'm going to read your bio. Mr. Tommy Seminaro from Connecticut. This is a very interesting story. I love the way right, he started. All right, Mr. Tommy Seminaro is actually going to be up first. He said maybe I can first. tweak this a bit. No, 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 no. No, I'm not tweaking anything, Tommy. He grew, up, he grew up in an Italian-American family. His grandparents were straight off the boat, hard-working Sicilians. And he grew up in Bridgeport, Connecticut, in a small town. It's a small town compared to the larger ones, 
in the United States, but per capita is one of the toughest places in the Northeast. And because of his upbringing, he always started trying to stay away from trouble. The old timers whom he was raised by didn't play games. They expected you to have a job, take care of yourself, and if you wanted something, you needed to go out, work, and then buy it. They expected you to leave the desk by the age of 18. Wow. And to so them, pool was just a game that was played in someone's basement or at a bar. Very well respected as I am. Uh, immigrant parents, grandparents. His father, Tommy Sr., is the one who introduced us to the game of pool. There was a pool table in his grandfather's basement. It was a small seven-foot valley table. And he started playing. He started playing when he was nine years old. His dad and himself and his grandfather would play golf. I never played that game, but you're going to have to tell me about it sometime. And I would stand on a milk cart, and he would then. And even back then, he was very competitive. He played his heart out against them. And he even won some, but he lost some. But remember how much he couldn't stand to lose and just wanted to make, to make himself improve. He also had two older sisters. <clears throat> and they were very competitive, and so was he. No matter what they did, they were doing whatever to be, whether it was hopscotch, jump rope, and he would always have to be in the game to try to beat them. There was always a competition between us because they were old and I would really try hard to always win. And most of the time, he did. <clears throat> no matter what it was, he set his mind up to become good at it. He, was, he also almost had a college scholarship to play baseball. And, but once he put his pool stick in his hand, seriously, for the first time, nothing else in the world mattered. It saved his life. He was running around with a rough crowd, and all of them playing, and all of them are either dead or in jail right now, and that wasn't an option for him. When he started playing, there was a lot of tournaments in his area. They had one big one, one, big one at Milford, the Milford Amusement. It was a handicap system like this. It was rated A, B, or C, and you either played at a nine, a seven, or a six. If you didn't like it, you didn't play. That's how it was. His first six tournaments, he didn't win a game. He was thinking about quitting the game and had an opportunity in Connecticut to learn the game by some of the best. So he started watching Larry Lascardi, Connecticut Johnny Versus, Bobby Hunt, Bruce Delfonso, Ken Wellman, Gabe the Mailman, Norman Silver Lake. Wow, the list continues. A guy named McGonagall? You watch McGonagall play? Wow. Thank you. Bob Dodgers and Bo McGarrett, Nick the Indian, Malajos, Manny Hamill, Ray Mack, Bob Mendesian, and John Fernandez, all of which happen to be up on that scoreboard, folks. The list goes on and on. He was going to journey out. In the meantime, he was journeying out and started playing elsewhere to try to gain experience without anyone knowing. And he did so, and he found himself in a spot in New Bedford, Mass. It was a pool room owned by Mike X. The name of the place, excuse me, Acubillas was the name, and they had a tournament. It was a, the New England Junior Nine Ball Tournament, and there were 40 to 50 kids, 18 and under, from New England. His toughest match was nine-year-old Billy Lanner, Billy the Kid Lanner. He, Billy the I Kid's came name, first, and my friend Mike Abbott came in second. There was a BCA qualifier in the, qualifier in the forum in Milford, Connecticut. It named Cool Breeze Bayes. The winner of that played the Junior Nationals in Louisville, Kentucky. I ended up winning the tournament, beating Joey Dodgers in the finals. Then I went to Golf House in Louisville, Kentucky, and that was my first exposure to great players in the country. Everyone you could think of was down there. The greats of the game of this time was the 1990s. I ended up coming in third. Max Everly came in second. And Chan Witt won the whole thing. Michael Contre won the 14 and under. From there, I continued to compete locally and throughout New England. Then in 1995, one of, the, one of the greatest pool rooms ever to grace the planet was open. It was called Chicago Billiards in West Haven, Connecticut. The owner of Chicago Billiards' name was Ralph. He was a multi-millionaire and he loved to play pool. My dad was a carpenter and he did a few jobs for Ralph's bakery that he owned. That he owned. Ralph was so, so into pool that he wanted to open the pool room. 
So he asked my father if he could build a room for him. And my dad and myself and a few other people built Chicago Billions. I call that place college for pool players. He made the atmosphere the most incredible that anyone could ever have made in the pool room. He fed everyone every night and he had beds in the pool room. It was like a prison. He had beds in the pool room. <laughs> They're talking about Chicago Billions, Ralph, so uh, the millionaire owned. Out of town, yeah, he, he had rooms in the back stay. where with. And he fed them too. The he would season was open 24 up and coming hours. Players. It was open seven days a week, a year, all year long, and they never looked, locked the doors. There was always action from sun up to sundown. You could walk up, wake up at 12 noon and four large games, or you could go up there at three o'clock in the morning and see the same thing. No matter what time you were there, something was going on. And Ralph had a stable of players, 10 to 15 killers. Joe Frady, Chucky Altamore, Larry Lascotti, Jeremy Saucy, Sal Bev, Johnny, Kinky, Robbie Sayers, the list goes on. Ralph supplied plenty of money for the pool room. Roadmen would come in from all over, no one could high roll us because Ralph had unlimited funds. Sometimes we'd all be sitting there and Ralph would just break out $3,000 out of his pocket to have a tournament, win a take off, just, just to have some kind of amusement going on in the room. For everyone, and he actually made the losers pay time, but it was double elimination. That sharpened my game immensely. Being around and competing with those guys, I continued to play until 1999. Then I started working a job. I still have many friends that are pool players. Some of them are the best in the world. I watch all the live streams. I try to get out, but it's just very difficult these days with my schedule and my life and the way it is. I will always love pool and I will always be around some way. It's in my blood. I think about it all the time and I am honored to be chosen for this award. I have won many local tournaments, came in the top fives a few years in the All About Pool Tour in New England. Anyone who came to Connecticut, I would give them action. The tournament in Milford Rec that I couldn't win a game in ended up being, I was barred because I was too good and won 10 out of 12. <laughs> I think Tommy one of my greatest wins was taking against Buddy Hall in an APA challenge match. In Chicago Billiards. He'll tell that story right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Tommy. Mr. Tom Seminara. There he is. I didn't realize uh, Tom was going to read, read my whole story. He just took all the words out of my mouth. So I don't know what to say anymore. Tell but. story. Tell the story. Tell the story. Yeah. So, when I first started playing pool, I was probably about, like he said, nine years old. And I was hanging with a real tough crowd. And I didn't like the way my life was going. I didn't like the way my life was going. So, my dad would take me to a, a pool room in, in, in Milford, Connecticut. It was called uh, Milford Amusement. And at the time, there was a lot of... Uh, I don't want to say older guys there, but I was only probably, you know, nine or ten years old. And they had video games. So I would go there and play the video games. And when I was done spending the money, I would sit down and, and uh, watch, you know, there was a ton of guys playing. It was like an afternoon room. And, you know, they, they'd be betting, you know, two, three, four thousand. Bobby was a, a regular there. And uh, was Tommy involved Caminero in a lot, of, Bobby lot of big games. And who's here? So I would sit there and watch these guys play, and I would think to myself, wow, you know, look, I, I could swear they were handing money back and forth at the time, but I, I was such a young kid that, you know, I didn't realize that you could make money playing pool. So instead of playing the video games that I was so competitive at, I said, you know what, let me try this pool thing. So I threw some balls yeah. up, and, and, and some of the older guys there would uh, show me some shots, and, and the next thing you know, I was hooked. And I remember uh, uh, there was a lot of people that, you know, have made a big difference in my life, and Bobby Hunt was one of them. He was like a father to me. And, um, you know, when I was a young kid, he would take me around and back me and, you know, he did everything that, uh, you know, uh, someone that cares about you would do. And, you know, the, the biggest thing for me with pool is the people that I met, you know, the connections that I made, 
I, I met so many nice people. Uh, my fiance, my, my my beautiful fiance, is is uh, I met her I met her through. And, you know, uh, Tom Harris, the the, the 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 biggest unknown cue maker on planet Earth, right there. And uh, you know, it, it, it's about the connections, and 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 you know, like I've been working for 15 years now. And have less stories than the ten years that I played pool, but you know you got to do what you have to do, and, and I'm just really honored to that Tom called me up and 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 you know said that I was being an inducted to this. You know it's a big honor, especially with these guys and this guy, and you know these these guys are real pool players, you know, and and um, it, it's just an honor, and and. Um, you know, I'm usually a guy that's never at loss for words, but I'm kind of like mumbling here, stumbling on here, you know, and, and I just look around this room, I see Joe Tucker and my friend Mario and Billy the Kid over there. Billy Lana is, uh, uh, he's one of, one of uh, Rhode Island's greats, and uh, I just ran into Ronnie O'Leary, I wanted to show him this. This is a 30-year-old tip-tapper right here. Probably the best one on planet Earth. And uh, I think he would get a kick out of it if he seen it. Uh, still sharp as a, a razor. But, like I said, I just want to just thank everyone. And um, it's an honor. You know, I, I met a ton of people. And uh, I look around and I'm like, man, this is amazing. Eric, Eric Ravens here. Uh, is it some Steve, I, I want to thank Steve and Gina. They've been doing a lot for pool for a long time, and uh, for over 20 years, you know, uh, they're just the greatest people. Upstate Al, Upstate hey, Al, I knew Al since the Golden Cube days and the Chelsea Cooper days, and uh, you know the service that he does for pool is amazing. You know. He, he brings pool to your living room, you know, where I don't get out much, and so I, I still love to follow this. And, uh, you know, he's just, he's amazing, you know, in my Thank book. You, and, you. Um, you know, the Larry Lascotti, rest in peace. George Sansuzzi Ginky was a good friend of mine. Um, Mentioning John Alice, I don't mean to bring this like to Johnny uh, Alice, uh, Larry Lascotti, Tommy's level, but. Those, these were all people that had big impacts in my life. Jimmy Denegra's over there sitting with his hands in his pocket. He's a wizard from Connecticut. Uh, you know, and uh, I, I even remember Mike 10, 10 years ago, uh, you know, he'd come around and, and now he's one of the best players in the, in the country slash world maybe. And, and uh, so it's an honor to be, you know, to be up here with this these set of people here. And, uh, I just want to say thank you, and I hope I didn't talk your ear off with bullshit. <laughs> All right, Tommy Sabanero Jr., baby. There he goes, inducted into the New England Billiards Hall of Fame. Yeah, I didn't realize you were going to read the whole thing. I kind of left some <laughs> iron. <wouldn't I? laughs> Way to go. What a great speech right there from Tommy Seminero. Here comes Sal. Sal Bev, we all call him through the years. Sal's uh, one that's never really good at giving a speech. That I can tell you that much. Don't expect too much out of Sally. He's a very quiet guy, subtle. His full name is Sal Latour, not Lockwood. He was known around the pool room as Sal Bev. He started shooting seriously at the age of 18 and shoot his millions in Brantford, Connecticut. With the exception of the owner, it was all young beginners, more of an arcade hangout than it was a real pool room. But he, he didn't know that at the time. In the early 90s, he started going to Milford Recreation Center in Milford, Connecticut. It was a more serious pool room. It was there that he met Jimmy the Jimmers, the neighbors, he taught him how to play one block and he's been hooked ever since. Sorry folks, hooking up the wrong monitor Chicago here. Open, another, another story about Chicago Bigland. 
and raised him in Connecticut and changed pool for him and anyone who was there at the time. The owner, Ralph Fabrio, was a crazy millionaire, and he would stake him and many others to action. Sometimes he would stake two pillars at a time just to see a game, and it didn't take long for the word to spread across the East Coast and beyond, and all the money in the pool was in West Haven, Connecticut. There was more than a handful of pros on a daily basis there. He played many hours of cheap one block with Larry Lascardi, Danny Basovich, John Fernandez, and a host of many others. His one pocket game came to a, got better a few games at a time, a few balls at a time. In 1995, a local high stakes player walked in Chicago, and he had played before a set for 100, but he said he was always trying to high rolling. This day was no different. He heard it and improved. He had it heard it. I improved, but he knew, never knew that I never played for big money. He wanted to play a race to four for thousand dollars. And Sal only had six hundred dollars. But he found a bunch of people to, to, to stake the other four hundred. And all of a sudden they were in a game and he couldn't make a ball because Evidently, he was being out bet, and he was behind three to nothing in the race to four. And then he took a break, and Larry Scotty gave him a pep talk. And he got him a cue to finish the first set, because in the first set, he lost his tip lane. Somehow, he came back and won that set. The only one who was more shocked than me was his opponent. And then he wants to play another one and shot in the race to three and bet 3,000. Larry gives me the okay and we start betting and playing and the rest was split among the crowd. He wins three to nothing, up 4,000. We bet 4,000, he's up 8,000. Went, went for the next one, 4,000 more, he's up 12,000. The next two sets were for 5,000. Six sets later and 18 hours later, he was finally, he finally busted the guy. Sal won a grand total of $22,000 that day. Wow, after getting a pep talk from Larry the Sky, Sal Perez won $22,000 for that player. And maybe a lot of other balloons in this country. After that, Larry would always introduce him as the guy who made the biggest score in Connecticut. Then he would tell the story as only Larry could tell a story. By the late 1990s, Chicago Billiards was on its way out. In, in 1995, his brother Frank and, and himself opened Action Billiards and Sports Car, Sports Bar in Hamden, Connecticut. It quickly took over as Connecticut spot for high stakes and pool tournaments. He was only going home to sleep in shower, so he put a bed in his back room and installed a shower. That made him there 7 hours, 24 7. Pros and road, road men frequented the place, and he matched up and with countless pros for countless hours. Nobody could say that they came and didn't get action. If they came in waiting to play the rotations game, he would stake or bet on one of the local killers. Guys like Chuck Altamori, Robbie Sayers, Tom Seminaro Jr., Jeremy Selsey. It was, the, it was the place to be for a while. Shorty, Tom D'Alfonso, went there for a tournament in, 19, in 2004, excuse me, and literally never left. He set up a pot for him in the back room. So from 2004 to 2008, anyone could show up for action. And it wouldn't even have to call anyone. Depending on if it was a nine ball or one pocket, one of us would roll out of bed and play. I've been running tournaments since the mid 90s, but I officially started the Connecticut Nine Ball Tournament Tour in 2000. I later changed the name to the East Coast Pool Tour. It's still going strong. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sal Alvarez. Sally says, baby, the, the room in here is mine. Thanks, everyone. Uh, I wish I sat in the last spot because Tommy's always a tough act to follow. Um, and my story is much the same as his. We came up together in the same area. Uh, South Bev owned a beautiful room. Yeah, I'm just honored. I'd like to thank uh, Jeremy for the induction. Jimmy for getting me hooked on one pocket. Guys like Bobby Hunt for playing me. And uh, that's about it. Short and sweet. Thank you very much. South Bev, I tell you, he's not a man of many words.
missed the south there. Tom didn't think it was going to be that short. Short and sweet. There you go. That's the way Sal likes to do things. All right, moving right along. Hey, Rich, what's up, buddy? Next on the agenda is uh, Mr. Joey Dupuy. Mr. Joey Dupuy. Okay. Joseph Dupuy is going to come here and give you the result version of his own life. Mr. Joseph Dupuy. And by the way, by the way, today is Joe's birthday. Yes, happy birthday, Joe. I did mention that earlier. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Joey. Happy birthday to you. Bravo. Bravo. What harmony in this room. Wow. <laughs> By the way, today is uh, Mike Zuckerman's birthday also. And if you look on that wall, folks, there's a very intense player up there. His name is Nick Palajos. Today was Nicky's birthday too. Thank you very much. Well, as always, I'm unprepared. I don't have uh, no eulogy here or anything going on, but I do have a story for you. Um, I started pool at the age of 13. When I was 13 years old, I was a competitive uh, candle pin bowler, and when I was doing that, I used to always play video games. I grew up in Boston, Mass. I grew up in the town Dorchester outside of Boston. And while I'm playing there, Lucky Strike Lanes is my bowling alley. And, you know, so I always liked the video games, so I wanted to go to Boston Bowl. A lot of people have, uh, are from this area know Boston Bowl 24 hour pool room. So I used to go down there. I wanted to go candle pin bowling and play this G Wiz. It was a very, very uh, big arcade. So when I went when I went there and I go when I go up to the desk and I say uh, I want to play uh, can I get a lane and size ten and play some pool and bowling and and I hear these balls crackling in the in, in the background and I turn around keep the microphone away from the other one I get it back up uh, so I hear the balls we're getting a little feedback there folks we will bang in the background and I turn around and. And I stop and I say, you know what, I don't want to play, I don't want that. I'm going to take the, the tape, the green table with the balls on. I didn't even know what the name of the game was called. <laughs> True story. So uh, what, what triggered that was when I was two years old, I remember going downstairs in the basement with my father and my uncle used to play pool. And they used to prop me up on a, uh, on a, a high chair and make me watch them play and hang out and, you know, father, son time. And... Uh, I used to have this little three-foot stick. I used to play my own little thing, trying to reach over the table, banging the balls, and it was all fun and games. But, you know, I carried on, went about my life, and never really thought about it until that one day. And uh, in that pool room itself, there was uh, great players. There were many, like Mark Ransom, uh, Skippy DePrisco, um, uh, what's his name? Fernandez, uh, some one-pocket players, Herb Berman, Andy Katz, uh, Many, many players that have come all over the place, and uh, I started playing and playing, and these people took me under their wing in a sense of saying, hey, hey, kid, yeah, you look good, you play good, hey, hey, here you go, hey, yeah, we're going to teach you some games, and uh, you look good at the table, you know, months and months go by, and then I start playing in little C tournaments, and I start getting into uh, the game very well, and, you know, I was a very quiet kid, so it was the only thing that really got my attention. Um, so when I did, I became very competitive and going on and playing and very intensely. And through the years, I became a competitive player. And then uh, I wanted to go pro at a young age. And uh, unfortunately and fortunately, I had kids at a young age. I, I wasn't going to go and uh, you know travel the country. I was thinking I was doing the right thing, taking care of my kids at a young age. And I never went pro. So I tried to do the right thing, and I struggled and struggled and struggled, and uh, I got back into the game about 10 years ago, 
and um, with the likes of pool rooms like this and sticks and stones and and uh, pool rooms around the uh, the area that got me back involved with the people that I've always driven to to come and play and and strive and compete with and and really engage in the sport again and I tried hard and I always wanted to get there and and I was never able to so I fought hard in the last seven years and uh, through the likes of uh, you know, the competitive nature of, say, the Mike Machines of the world these days, uh, Shorty, Tommy D. Alfonso, uh, Tommy Seminaro Jr. back in the day. Um, many, many players and, and folks that have taken me under their wing and really pushed me to go further and strive harder and go for excellence in this game. And uh, once, and then American Rotation came around a few years ago and. I was noticed a little, people knew who I was, I made a little name for myself, but American Rotation and Joe Tucker had come around and they gave me an opportunity to come and play in this exciting new game where I can get to these events and maybe make another name for myself, which I had. I had uh, won the first American Rotation Championship, I became a national, you know, a little national sensation for a little while, and uh, I was really excited and really getting into the game. And uh, you know, it was it was that right there that it got me more into playing harder, playing more competitive events, it's like the U.S. Open or or uh, Derby City that I've been to once. Uh, Vegas has gotten me to a lot of places where I could see that I can compete with the best in the world. Uh, and at some times even win as such in this tournament I beat this gentleman right here on this table very table twice in the finals and I beat a lot of very good players And I beat a lot of a lot of very good players on route to getting to him playing here and and those feats there are, are the things that get you where you want to be the memories that you that 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 you take with you into the future and and they're always going to be there and i want to thank uh steve goulding regina goulding snooker's establishment dan milligan sticks and stones all my fans all the competitors that i've competed throughout the years i love you all i appreciate all the love you guys give to me and thank you it's an honor tom mcgonagall thank you very much the new england hall of fame going strong and i love it thank you very much mr joseph <laughs> Pick up that mic, Tommy. There you go. <laughs> a little bit of feedback. Oh, that's what. That's what. <laughs> there you have it. Go to three, get in. Before I bring up Tommy Alfonso, Joey just made a very important uh, note in my mind. Uh, it's time we thank the people that have supported us through this crazy, wild experience of life. Tom Alfonso up next to actually one. All of you people here are Ocean representing State in 2011. some of us behind here, behind me, I believe. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My wife, I didn't always come home in the best of moods, folks. Or leave it alone. And who can do that to you? But it's time to appreciate the people that put up with us. Thank you very much. <laughs> Tom D'Alfonso um, up next. The next gentleman, Tom Shorty D'Alfonso. When I first heard there was another Shorty, I said to myself, There'll never be another shorty. The first shorty was Boston Shorty, folks, and he happens to be right up here behind me. And he was a fierce, honorary competitor, unlike Tommy. Tommy's a gentle, honorary competitor. And it, it's a pleasure to play pool with him. Tom's relationship with pool became a back in 1993. A 12-year-old Tommy convinced his friends to go to a bowling line 
alley on the way home from school. When he saw people shooting at the pool tables for the first time, instantly Tom was infatuated with the game. After his buddy Jeff showed, showed him a game of pool, a, a game of nine ball, he went back to that bowling alley every chance he could get. It wasn't long before Tom had the word of the bigger pool at age 14. Tom's uncle Paul introduced him to a man named Rick Dowden. He was the owner of Rainbow Meadows in Oxford, Massachusetts. Rick befriended Tom and began showing him the ropes of a real program. A local open program by the name of Jim Walters was in the green room quite often as well. He met the Tom for a while, showing him some of the more advanced details of the pocket meters. With this new information, Tommy, the love for the game, only grew. By now, most of his friends were into sports, video games, and chasing girls. For Tom, the only thing that made him truly happy was playing pool. So confident, so confident with his plan, Tom approached his parents with the idea of playing pool full time. After a few years of honing his skills, it was clear to everyone that Tom was becoming something really special. Especially his parents allowed him to quit school at the age of 16. Tom played passionately every day from open until close for years in the same pool room. There were many nights that Tom even slept in the pool room. After a long day of playing, he would pass out under the table, then wake up and begin shooting again. He was really taking this game seriously. By the age of 18, Tommy had just, was just too good to compete with anyone in the area. Soon enough, his hunger for competition drove him to leave home. He began taking lessons to New York to play shooters out there. While Tom was earning a decent amount of money, it still wasn't enough to make a living. Then one fateful day at Pat's Q and Beards in New York, Tom met a backer named Sammy. This was without a doubt a match made in heaven. Sammy had the connections and the money while Tommy had the skills to beat anyone. This is where things revealed, really began to take place. Sammy was unbelievable, an unbelievably talented player, and Tom, with the monetary backup they needed, they hit the road together. They would get information on money players from big name players, such as Danny the Kid Delicious, Pasovich, and Chris Bartram. Together they traveled over 40 states. Mentioning Chris Bartram, mentioning over time, Kid Delicious, Sammy Pasovich. To be reckoned with. In one instance, Tom walked into Glass City's pool hall in Toledo, Ohio, disguised as a transfer student going to college. Sammy had led him up to the game to play for $10,000. The game was agreed on races of 13, two sets ahead for $5,000 each set. The winner would get $10,000. Now, Tom was playing against the best player in the Ohio area, so the odds were not good in his favor. Little did he know that Tom was a special kind of college student. So with the 10K up for grab, the opponent's back and put the money on the leg. After the match began, he went for a walk. He was figuring to come back to catch a good part of the action. However, however, when he finally did return to his room, his face dropped. Shorty had already beaten the guy two sets in a row, 13 to one, and then 13 to three. It was over in no time. After realizing what had happened, the backup from Ohio looked at Tommy and said, Damn kid, you're the man. No more action for you. After about 10 years of making live scores across the country, word spread of Shorty's ability. Tom Alfonso had become one of the top money players in the country. His reputation for walking into pool rooms and beating everyone was making it difficult for Tom to make any games. Therefore, he decided to play tournaments. Since then, he has won multiple events in his professional career as well as consistently placing very high in major events over the years. He is a past New Hampshire State Champion, a past Ocean State Champion, and the Music City runner-up, just because, of, just to name a few. Most recently, Tom finished fourth at Turning Stone Casino in 2015 in the 128 player field, filled with most of the top players around the world. To this day, nobody takes his ability lightly. Tommy now lives in Providence, where he focuses on giving lessons and passing his knowledge onto a few up-and-coming players. He's, no, he's a no-nonsense player, and his word is gold. He truly is a legend of the game and a class act. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tom. Shorty, Tommy Alfonso, another man of very little words. Coming up in your screen right now. Thank you guys very much. I'd just like to thank Tom for putting all this together.
Steve, my man, for always looking out for me, taking care of me, and just all my fans and my friends. Love all you guys. Thank you. There he is. Very little uh, words from Tommy the Alfonso. Congratulations, Tommy. Looks like Tom has a CD here. I don't know the plans, folks, so we're playing it. Uh... Oh, of course, he's got to receive a certificate. Plus, he has a plaque of pictures on the wall here from the New England Billions Hall of Fame. Well deserved. And coming up is going to be Becky Ellsworth Tucker, that's Joe Tucker's wife. From 1998 until the year 2000, she played in, on various tours and inter, inter, independent events. Ranked as high as the top five in New England, top 20 in the Northeast, and top 50 on the WPBA, which is a women's professional theater association, nationally ranked 48 in 1999. After two WPBN's PBA events, she placed 13 through 16 at 1999 Hunter Doyle Classic in Rochester in the 1999 U.S. Open at Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. 1993 through 1995, she was sponsored by Rhode Island Video Club in North Providence. From 1996 to 2000, she was stock sponsored by Snookers Video Cafe. 2014 to present, she's back competing, promoting, promoting, writing and directing. Assistant Director of the Open Division of, of the 15 Ball American Rotation Championships in Las Vegas, Director of the American Rotation Women's Division and Women's New England Championships events. 2016, she continues to be a student of the game with guidance from her teacher husband, Mr. Joe Tucker. Becky enjoys 15 Ball American Rotation, the game of one pocket, and raising her two boys, Joseph and Joshua Tucker. She grew up in South Attleboro, always had a table and they hit balls and, and for the first time while she was in kindergarten. Notice how young a lot of these people started being around the game of pool clubs. There's no inhibitions at that age. Her teen years, she would play at North Pole's game in billiard room. Upon the time she discovered on cue billiards in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. Her greatest memories and influences were watching Nick Vallejo's playing on table one at Snookers. His intensity, focus, spirit, and style was something no one has yet replicated or will ever again, and he will never be forgotten. What motivates her to improve is the memories of the heart and determination of Joe Tucker, playing Joe Frady every time he got a chance. No one works harder to succeed than Mr. Tucker. Lastly, her best and favorite memories of her playing pool at home, hour after hour, straight pool against her grandfather. Nothing beats that. Ladies and gentlemen, Becky Ellsworth Tucker. Thank you. Um, it's actually really special to be here because I've been here since the beginning. Um, I remember when that banner of Ricky Marcos was put up in 1990. So um, it's kind of fitting to be on the wall now. Um, I do want to say the most fulfilling thing is to promote with Joe American Rotation. It's such a great game. It's bringing a lot of us together and the camaraderie and the players really get along and they're loving to improve. And New England just has such a history. If you look around, there's so many people here you might not even know. So the only thing I actually will ask from everyone is to walk around, read everybody's story, 
and really feel part of what this community has to offer um, from the past, the you know, present and future. And I just want to thank you. And that's about it. Thank and you so much. Is. Thank you. Another short speech. Very well done. Congratulations. She does promote a lot of pools. Gender, also known as New York Larry. Unfortunately, Larry, uh, Larry was supposed to be here tonight, but uh, due to uh, his wife having chemotherapy today in the past few days, this gentleman's 88 years old, by the way, and uh, his wife is his biggest supporter, so he's there supporting his wife tonight. But his, his grandson, Greg, Greg Kaplan, right? He's here to represent Larry. I want to show a video. I hope the video is ready. This is the video he sent to me. Since since he's oh, been a video uh, behind going to be inducted, he's going to be inducted. Uh, Larry has been on the cover of six newspapers. Um, so get yourself out there, folks. You know, get have people uh, tell people you're doing this. My my newspaper did a, an article. My wife called the newspaper. Of course, the article was all wrong, but at least it's something. Do uh, we have the video? This is it. Do we have, do we have volume? We have a video of Larry. This is Larry and the group of people. Who, he goes to Southern, Southington, Connecticut every week. He gives lessons. He plays with a group of people. And uh, he talks about the game of pool. Unfortunately, we don't have the, the audio. Uh, you can cut the video right now, though. We, we don't have the audio. But it's kind of him getting involved with the game of pool here. The, uh, Fox, the Fox Sports Network in his area picked up his story. Uh, I'll, I'll hopefully get this on YouTube and we'll all can watch it. I'm going to read his biography now. Larry Jenlet, also known as New York Larry. Lawrence Jenlin, later to become known as New York Larry, was born in Brooklyn in 1927. His first exposure to pool was as a 13-year-old, when he went into a neighborhood pool room to watch his older brother Paul playing three cushion billiards. Very soon after, Larry began frequenting Jaime's pool room in the Brownsville section of Brooklyn, and he became a rack boy for tips in exchange for free pool table time. Now, here's a very important line in the story. The free pool table time did not include the light on the table being turned on. At 17 years old, Larry enlisted in the Navy and he served honorably in World War II aboard an aircraft carrier, CV-21, sailing the Pacific. During this time at sea, he wasn't performing his duties when he wasn't performing his duties as top loader on a 40 millimeter guns. He put the time in to become a very good boxer. After being discharged in 1946, Larry returned to Brooklyn, where he became a salesman and later a wedding photographer. In the 70s and 80s, he had good success winning quite a few tournaments at Brooklyn and at Gene Belokas' Hall of Fame Billiards, a Jackie Cannon's pool room, and his own room, Avenue N Billiards. In the 90s, Larry became a regular player at West End Billiards, where he, he and many of the sports legends came to compete. Something most of us can relate to happened to Larry one day while at the West End. He was participating, practicing by himself for a tournament, and a gentleman came up to him and said, excuse me, I hope you don't mind me saying so, but you have such, you are such a pleasure to watch you play. Your footwork is beautiful. It's like watching Fred Astaire, the way you glide around the table. Larry responded, are you sure you're talking about me? Look around the room. There's Larry Lascardi, Neptune Joe, Al Lapina and Ginky, and Tony Robles. 
The man replied, yes, I know, but the, it's the way you move around. It's just beautiful. Well, that was it for Larry. He couldn't make another ball the rest of the day. All he could think about was his feet, where they were positioned. It was the perfect shot. Larry met the love of his life, Lila. Lila, excuse me. Later to be known as New York Lila. In 1948, that was two years before I was born, by the way. And they were married just three, three months later. They had two children, and understandably, Larry became very busy in his career, but always made time for some food. After retiring, Larry and Lila moved to Connecticut in, 19, in 2001. Larry was away from the hustle and the bustle and finding in a position to do something he wanted to do for quite some time to give back to the community, community and promote the sport of pool. He became a certified BCA instructor and joined up with Dave McNeil and Walt Zinkovich and became the clinical instructor for the New England Beat Academy in Southington, Connecticut. From then on, New York, New York Larry has been active teaching pool, offering free clinics at senior centers as well as in university. Well, I'll tell you what, guys, I'm sorry also, you can't see the video the that's behind this going on, but Tom says he's going to put it on YouTube. I'm happy to help anyone in need of advice for their games and equipment. His main focus, however, has become getting seniors involved in playing pool for all its social, recreational, competitive, and physical benefits. Being a veteran himself, he is also especially proud of helping, having helped many veterans to navigate the VA system in order to accept the, access the benefits they have earned. He has actually taken quite a few of them to the VA Medical Center and walked them through the process. At 88 years old, Larry remains a strong competitor on the table. For anyone who might be interested in the fruity pool lesson, he is available most Saturdays at, at Shooters in Southern Connecticut. Larry is exceed, exceedingly civic-minded, civic-minded, and is an exemplary human being. He is a great role model and truly wonderful promoter and ambassador for the sport of pool. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry New York, Larry New York. This here is Larry's, I believe, grandson that can be on front of this. Larry, good to be here. Good evening, everyone. My name is Craig Kaplan. I'm Larry Gendler, also known as New York Larry, or to me, uh, Grandpa Larry. Okay, his grandfather. This Thank you for allowing grandson. me to accept this in, his induction into the Billiards Hall of Fame. Any of you that know Larry realize his passion and his dedication to the game of pool. His level of passion and dedication expands way beyond his game, hence the reason he could not make it tonight. Larry is at home taking care of Lila, his wife, his biggest fan, and my grandmother, who cannot come here for health reasons. As long as I remember, my grandfather always had the passion to teach and spread his knowledge. When I was a young boy and my grandfather was a professional photographer, I would walk around his apartment following him while he prepared his cameras, his flashes, and his batteries. I would follow him around all night before he left. He would always um, answer my questions. He would answer them in a technical but loving way. He always let me help, which was his way of teaching. He was always a very hands-on teacher. While helping him, my only form of payment was uh, stealing Tic Tacs that he had in his bag. Um, but I could fill uh, hours with stories from my childhood and the things that my grandfather taught me and uh, the good, the bad, the different. Um, but what he's doing now, teaching seniors to play pool, to perfect their game, teaching seniors to and play keeping pool. them active is the most admirable. This has also helped soften my grandfather and keep him young. He has affected so many people by donating his time and spreading his knowledge. My grandfather has also donated his time teaching seniors digital photography um, at senior centers. Wow. He's uh, photographed you, three Larry. cancer survivor banquets at the hospital central Connecticut. This induction into the Billiards Hall of Fame is quite an honor and a privilege for my grandfather, and we're all so proud. And also well-deserved. We should all learn from my grandfather's passion, his knowledge, his devotion, and his generosity, which is what made him the man he is today. 
My grandfather would like me to acknowledge with thanks the following people. His wife, Lila, for her love and support for the last 67 years. Tom McGonigal, the Hall of Fame Committee, Brian Carroll, who made this all possible, Bruce DeFranzo, Bobby Hunt, and Sal Conti, fellow inductees, and all the wonderful seniors who joined him in the game of pool and friendship. Wow, nice. To my grandfather, who I love from the bottom of my heart, I'm so proud of the person you've become. You've always had my back, and you've always been on my team. We'll always win this one argument. This is an inside joke. We'll always know that we can win the argument. Is it a rifle or is it a gun? There's a fact that my grandfather wanted me to let everyone here know today is that uh, there was a study in Copenhagen that people who drink beer and play pool are healthier and live longer. Have a great night, everyone, and thank you for having me. God bless, Larry. Congratulations, my friend. Very well done. New York, Larry. The grandfather will receive the certificate from Mr. Tom McGonagall. I'll tell you what, these stories uh, from the past, and to know what pool has brought uh, into others' lives, such as I, I just New York to Larry. I, I haven't met this man now. personally, but I, I got him on the phone and he started telling, telling me a pool story. His grandfather, New York Larry. He's in a, he's in a delicate test if you happen to have a pool room right, in, in, in New York and this. All kinds of stuff hanging, sausages and pepperonis or whatever, whatever's hanging. He's playing a guy and he beats the guy for 20 bucks. Right? And the guy refuses to play him. Pay him, excuse me. I'm blowing the story already. But anyway, the guy doesn't pay him the money. And as the guy's walking away, Larry grabs one of these things that are hanging from the wall and hits the guy over the head with it. As he hits the guy over the head, the guy had a glass eye, and the glass eye is rolling on the pool table. <laughs> Picture that, folks. That's, that's what I don't know if you he guys heard that all. You just hit him. <laughs> wow. anyway, that's a great story. <laughs> Next on the agenda is uh, Bobby Hill. <laughs> He was taught the game of pool by his father, Richard Hilton, who was the main Bobby Hilton next, player. getting inducted. Good for you. The little he story, Bobby the Hilton game. sitting to the used to drive left of Tom McConnell. Right Every day after school and work, and he would, oh, you, you didn't open it, you would just go there, excuse me. Every day after school and work and play for hours. He also played with La at Larry Lascotti's pool room, World Championship Bayers, where he learned a lot about pool and hustling. Uh -huh. He knew he was always wanted to be a pool room owner himself someday. When he was 22, he fell in love with his girlfriend, now wife of 23 years, Chrissy Taylor Hilton. <laughs> hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? Congratulations. And uh, where am I? While they were dating, he used to go and shoot pool with Chrissy's father. That's one way to get him. <laughs> to keep him happy, anyway. Terry Taylor, a program manager for IBM and a Q stick at Q stick in Maryland. Q stick in Maryland, yeah. Okay. Terry and Bobby came up with the idea together to write a computer program that would make running a pool room more efficient. This includes keeping track of pool time, daily records, and even turning the lights off and on above the tables, which they still use at Yale Billiards. This program was sold to Chalkers Choice in Bristol and BNL Billiards in Rocky Hill. Terry and Bobby used their knowledge of pool and computers to open up their own pool room, Yale Billiards in Wallyford, in Wallyford, Connecticut, in 1994 together. Terry eventually sold Yale Billiards to Bobby in 1998, where he has been the sole owner ever since. 
Bobby has had many different players come through in and out of his room throughout the years, whether amateurs, professional, professionals, or hustlers, including Larry Lascotti, Jeremy Sassi, Crystal La, Tommy Seminero, Ava Latone, Lawrence, Bobby Hunt, Robert Purser, Phil Davis, Lucas, Brasco Vernon, Marano. Upcoming. He's an upcoming player, and even Trick Shot artist been up and most recently, the most recent. Today, Bobby still expresses his love of the game by teaching, promoting, and raising awareness about pool leagues and tournaments, and to do part in keeping the sport alive. Bobby also keeps the family tradition alive at Yale, where he is in teaching his only daughter, Rebecca, a little widow, helped in the sport for years. Much of his extended playing family plays come out of Yale, including nephew Robert Preston, who recently won the Winter Classic here at Snookers in Rhode Island. In 2014, a USA PL League that Bobby was on won the Nationals in Las Vegas. As a beloved employee, after a beloved employee passed away from type 1 diabetes in, 19, in 2014, Bobby started an annual nine ball tournament in her honor and has raised a total of over $3,000 to fund for diabetes research. Yale Billiards is a major supporter. Yeah, my mic is a little low. I'm keeping yeah, it that way. Dozens of teams come out of Yale and gone, gone out to Vegas for the the years, including Thank teams cop, captain by Bobby himself. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bobby Hilton. Bobby Hilton. A lot of friends and family here being from the Hartford area. Got a small little speech I'm going to read. <laughs> it's got about four pages. All right, first of all, let's everybody want to thank uh, Tom Magano for nominating us also uh, for this year's Hall of Fame. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate that. All right. I want to thank my, uh, my wonderful wife, uh, Christine, and uh, my marvelous daughter, Rebecca. Yeah. And again, I would like to congratulate all the inductees of this 2016 class. Some of them I know more than others, but they're absolutely amazing, right? There we go. All right, it hasn't been easy to open the pool hall. I owned the pool hall for 20-something years. There's been a lot going on. Everybody knows. You got the economy going on up and down. You got a $5 gallon of gas. Poker hit us pretty hard for a while, right? You know, but uh, I'm still here. I'm pretty proud of that. Uh, I made it through this by sticking with my business through thick and thin, always striving to be the best possible business owner I could possibly be. <laughs> Going from darts to pool leagues. I don't know if anybody remembers this, but we had blacklight pool for a little while. I don't know if anybody remembers that back in the 80s uh, or 90, sorry, early 90s. Uh, and I made it through all this, still here. That's why I'm proud to say I'm the owner of Yale Billiards for 22 years. <laughs> yeah. My only regret is of uh, my 30 years of pool playing, I didn't write a, a book about some of these shady, wonderful characters <laughs> in the pool business. <laughs> All right. Uh, as Tom told you, I did learn how to play from my dad. Um, unfortunately, he took to take me to bars when I was 13, and I used to watch him hustle a little bit and, you know, got intrigued by the game. And uh, from there, I fell in love with the game and uh, started, uh, as Tom said, playing at Taxi Billiards. Uh, World Championship Billiards, you know, I don't know if everybody knows, a lot of people know Larry Scotty. You learn a lot about pressure there. I remember sh shooting a nine ball, you know, playing my friend, maybe $5. I got Larry in the corner at the counter saying, hey, $20, you don't make that nine. <laughs> you know, a lot of pressure on a 17-year-old <laughs> kid, you know. Um, but that's how it was. Um, I remember growing up, going to bars after that, uh, playing a lot of tournaments at Classic Billiards with my brother-in-law, Bobby Pierce, uh, hustling, playing pool. Uh, Playing people like Carlos Vieira, me and him, a lot of great players. And then 22 years old, I met my wife, Christine Hilton. All right. Uh, through here, I met Terry Taylor, a forward thinker, someone who created a computer program himself to run a pool hall, uh, and then we opened Yale Billiards. He had the faith to invest in me, uh, the faith to invest in me in a pool hall, and <clears throat> And for that, that's why I'm here today for Yale Billiards. All right. 
All right, I just want to thank everybody out that came out today. Don't cry, right, Liz? All right. Easy. All right. <laughs> uh, Terry and Kathy, without their full support, um, the Oblivions wouldn't be here and this wouldn't be possible. Thank you very much. Chrissy, Rebecca, Ricky, Amber, Debbie, Bobby, Cynthia, Donna, Jack, Adam, my family. It's been there 100% for me every single moment if I need them. Love you guys. All right. Uh, one of my good friends and one of the uh, best pool players I know, Robert Pierce. All right. Uh, if you don't know Robert, this kid, this kid's a phenomenal player. Worked for me since he's been 16 years old. He won the Winter Classic here. Uh, beat some great players in that event. Was on the live stream, and uh, he was very uh, important to my business. He worked for me for 10 years until he got a real job. <laughs> we miss him, but I want to say thank you to him. And also, last but not least, all my close friends that I made over the last 20 years. Uh, well, actually, first got to admit uh, one more. Liz Glass, one of my best employees and best friends. Without her, it wouldn't be possible. Making me write this speech. Very good job. All right. One of the best things that everybody talked about up here is not also about pool. It's about relationships. All right. The people that you meet. Now, I met most of these guys at my pool room at some point. Phenomenal players. I met pros. I met people that don't even know how to hold a stick. I have cues that the tip fly off and people actually still try to use this. So everybody comes to the room. And that's what makes it fun. That's what makes it enjoyment. There's so many different people. And there's a couple people I just want to say thank you and I love you guys. Calm down. Okay. All right. Uh, Eddie Step, Dave Gavis, Phil Davis, Dave Z, Jeremy Serini, Daryl Helm, Nick Jr., Orlando Delgado. Thank you guys for coming out all this way from Connecticut. Appreciate it. All right, that's it. There you have it. Bobby Hilton. Sailing in. The New England Bleeds <laughs> Very well done, Bob. And I think. Oh, Yale Bears, 950 Yale Avenue, Wallingford, Connecticut, 06492. <laughs> Next up. <laughs> Looks like it's going to be Michael DeShane. His home room. Last uh, inductee of the evening, Mr. Michael Deshane from Waterville, Maine. Mike was born in Waterville, Maine and played out of TJ's Classic Bayes. Mike Deshane's father sitting at the left hand upper corner in the He's a multiple shirt. winner of the, the state, of, state of Maine championships. Multiple winner on the New England Jazz Pool Tour. And this pool is packed with people and, people and players that this are going to end the tournament. Over, over the <laughs> Good the Good He's got three in a row. Nice oh, nice two two Tom McGonigal recognizing all the championship banners that are on the wall from Mike DeShane. And not only that, Mike DeShane, I believe, has a personal trophy shelf here. And it is probably right now growing to about 15 to 20 feet long with trophies upon trophies uh, sitting on the wall. If you ever come to Snookers, come back to the Hall of Fame room, look up to your right hand side on the wall. And that's his trophy. Mike DeShane has a Welcome to England, here. not the United States, the world, Mr. Michael Lichina. He was the winner of the 2011 Ultimate Ten Ball Champion, winner of Turning Stone Classic 19, two-time World Cup pool team member, and three-time Moscone Cup team member. Now these memberships, okay, folks, these memberships, he's representing our country and the people that play pool in our country. Not in New England, in the country. It's like being on the, uh, the right of the, of the golf, if you, you know anything about golf. Mike's one of only five, only five, 
people to make that team three times at the age of 28. Major, 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 major accomplishment. We are proud that Mike DeShane comes from New England and Waterville, Maine. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Michael DeShane. Mike DeShane, up next. I definitely feel like I should have wrote something down, and I didn't. Um, you know, I want to thank my family. Everybody came out. You know, even my mom and dad, they haven't been in the same room in 14 years. Congrats to them. <laughs> um, you know, it's congratulations to everybody who's been inducted. You know, we all have history, whether it's good or bad. You know, we all have history, so congrats again. Um, you know, where do I start? Thanking the people. You know, I want to thank my parents for letting me play pool. You know, at 14 years old, it's, it takes a lot to trust a kid to go out there and, and travel around Maine or New England and not expect them to dabble in something stupid, you know, and, and, and they, were, they were awesome and, uh, you know, they had some confidence in me to do the right thing and, and I did, so thank you guys. Um, I want to thank, um, I want to thank my buddies from Maine, you know, Ivelo Petrov and my buddy Steve Santagati, you know, Evo took me under his wing when I was 18 years old, 19 years old, and he let me travel New England with him and uh, really supported me, giving me, even backing me, you know, until I had my own money to uh, do what I needed to do. And uh, my buddy Steve Santagati, where he actually let me stay for free down here in um, Warwick, Rhode Island, with $300 in my pocket, and, and I never looked back. So uh, thank those guys. <laughs> also, two, two important people that have really helped me out in this game. Um, is Bruce Bartholet of the Connecticut APA. He's done a lot for me and, and I appreciate everything he's ever done. And uh, Mr. Steve and Regina Goulding, you know, uh, I can only imagine what I look like. I can only imagine what I looked like when I was 20 years old and I walked in this place in a, in a college shirt and, and um, a sweater and hand him a packet for him to sponsor me. You know, I can only imagine what, <laughs> what was going through his head at that time, but you know, he, he's done a lot for me and, and I appreciate everything. Thank you, Steve. Um, you know, my story is I started playing pool when I was 14 and uh, started traveling around Maine, won a couple Maine state championships. I um, started playing in the Joss Tour. I knew at a very young age that I was going to do this for a living. You know, nobody else thought I was going to be able to do it, but I, I definitely did. So. Um, I traveled around New England and then started watching some of the, the better players out there and and um, used everything they had and, and put it into my own game and uh, I've been I've been lucky to, to have a great career in this sport and ho hopefully it goes further you know this could have been a couple more years down the road but um, I just want to thank everybody for coming out tonight and uh, congratulations everybody thank you there you go Mike the thing. Putting it on the table, making it real. A lot of people don't see that side of Mike the Stain. Well, you just wouldn't. We're going to have all eight of the inductees right now on screen. Get your screen caps ready, folks. Every one of them will be right here on camp. Have the other guys pop. There they are, folks. All eight. And I think they have to stand there for the entire song. The one gentleman, uh, Bobby Milton, is kind of tall. I wish they would move him in closer, but... I can't get out there and direct things as...
Ow. 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 Just asking one of the photographers to take some pictures for me. And I'll boot those up later on to Upstate Allen Friends on Facebook. This is a big photo op for the family. They're all flashes are going off. I don't know if you can see the flashes uh, from your vantage point, maybe reflecting off some of the glass. But it's kind of like the news crew here. <laughs> it's a great moment. And now, a big, huge video camera. It looks like one of the local news crews. Man, this thing is huge with a light on it. You probably noticed the light. It's lighting up this whole room. Just walked in. Wow, what a light that is. LED light. Beautiful. Now the light went off. Wow. Photo ops going on. Yeah, Mike's, Mike's dad, that's right, Marty. Absolutely right, sir. Well, looks like Tom might have turned his mic off. And that concludes. Tom's mic died just in the nick of time. <laughs> he, the mic saved was great for the whole ceremony. Folks, that concludes the New England Billiards Hall of Fame inductions. What a great job. Congratulations, everyone. Upstate Al of AZB TV in the booth once again. And we're going to let the cameras roll. And the reason we're going to do that is because there's so many players here right now in the room that are going to be participating in the Ride to Sell tournament combined with the Josh Northeast Time Ball Tour, Mr. Mike Zuckerman, that maybe something will jump off. Tommy Jr. is in the house. He's always missed the action. We know that. Yes, and his mom. Yes, Mike's mom. So we're going to allow the cameras to uh, to roll. But then again, we don't know what's going to happen. So we're standing by in our end. We want to thank everybody out there. We hope you enjoyed it. We're trying to do the best we can on this segment. See you soon.
You're welcome, Joshua. Just answering somebody just sent me a message. There it is, the last forever tip tool. Now on board with AZB TV. I'm going to give a big shout out to these guys. And you can find this tip tool at www.lastforever.com. I tell you what, I uh, received a shipment from these gentlemen. And uh, it is lightweight aluminum. They have all different sizes nickel, diamond, pro. Uh, scuffers, tip tools, and you can get yours at that web address right down below. Free shipping to U.S. and Canada. Thank you, lastforever.com. We also want to mention Mr. Greg Antonakis, American Q Pickers. That's his telephone number, 845-489-4122. Get, get your... Southwest, from the best, contact Greg Antonakis at ga9ball at gmail.com. There it is. Thingabridge.com. You're going to be seeing more of these ads during the tournament this whole weekend. Uh, these are the people... These are the people that's... Uh, Support all this, what's going on, as you can see. <laughs> Hold on, folks. I got Mike DeShane here. He's handing me a barrel of hundreds. What he owes me, because I said his speech wouldn't last more than 20 minutes. He made it. It was 19 minutes. One second. He's always prepared, this guy, always. Mike the same. Um, these are, these are, the, those are the sponsors that sponsor all this, what's going on. You know, and without them, I'll tell you right now, and special thanks to uh, Mr. Steve Golding and Regina Golding. As you can see, everybody getting behind the curtains wants to take pictures. Uh, this is what Bobby Hilton, uh, Bobby Hilton owns a pool room. And this is some of his supporters, his family, of course, his wife, everybody else. Let's see if we can uh, swing that cam in one direction or the other. Give you a shot of everybody. More or less, we'll try to get it there. And uh, all these folks come out to support Bobby. And that's nice to see. And uh, what a great room. They couldn't come to a better room. Snickers in Providence, Rhode Island. Proud owners. And well respected, Mr. Steve and Regina Goulding. Thank you, Steve and Regina. They always do a, a show that's uh, hard to believe by many. And we're going to be standing by. We're going to let the cameras roll. Upstate's going to get a little go-go juice in the system. We'll be right back. <laughs> 